So just over a year ago, I went on my first ever solo trip to the beautiful Belgian city of Bruges. So seeing as it was my first ever solo trip, I didn't want to go anywhere too big. So I did a bit of research on some small European destinations and Bruges kept coming up quite high on all the lists. I never knew too much about the city, apart from what I'd seen in the movie In Bruges. Great movie, by the way, check it out if you haven't seen it. And I always thought it looked cool from the movie, but I did a bit more reading up about it and it didn't take me long to make up my mind and get it booked. It really is a perfect destination for your first ever solo trip or for traveling solo in general. Now, Flemish is their first language and not too many people are going to know Flemish, but German, Dutch, French and English are spoken almost everywhere. So there's no need to worry about that. And the local people are very friendly and helpful. I would recommend going for three days just to get the full experience and enjoy what it has to offer. It is a typical European destination with a lot of history and some stunning architecture. So make sure to always have that camera at hand just to get those perfect pictures for your Instagram. Now, it may be small, but it definitely packs a punch with a lot to see and do. And it is easily manageable just by walking around the city. So no extra stress of having to worry about public transport. When traveling to Bruges, you fly into Brussels airport. And I found the best way to connect between the airport and Bruges was by train. The station is located just one floor below the main terminal in the airport. So it's very easy to find. Now, I would also recommend pre-booking your ticket on their website in advance, but make sure to print it out because you'll need to scan the barcode at the turnstile to gain access to the platforms. Now, the train journey itself takes about an hour and a half, but it does go in quite quick. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Obviously, whenever you're traveling solo, hotel location is key. You don't want somewhere too isolated or in a part of a neighborhood which may not be too safe. And the hotel I stayed at was perfect. It was the Flores Carlos Hotel and it was only a 20 minute walk or a 10 minute drive from the train station and a 10 minute walk from the main market square. So if you're out in the evening having a drink or a meal, you wouldn't have felt uncomfortable walking back to the hotel in the dark. It was also close to all the activities I had planned. And the hotel itself was reasonably priced, clean, modern, staff were brilliant, friendly, helpful, room is perfect for what I needed it for, your Wi-Fi included in the room, and there was a breakfast buffet included in the price, which was perfect for loading up on for a long day of exploring ahead. Which leads me on to my next segment, my five recommendations of things you must do when in Bruges. So here we go guys, the fun part. My recommendation of five things you must do when in Bruges. Now, they're in no particular order because they were all brilliant and I couldn't rank them. But let's kick it off. Number one, a visit to the main market square. Now, like most European destinations, there's always one main market. And this is the center point, the hub, where everybody gathers and where most of the main attractions can be found. But I would just simply recommend spending some time to have a, a drink or something to eat at one of the many cafes and restaurants surrounding the square. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sights and the sounds. Number two, a tour of the Half Man Brewery. Now you don't need to be a keen beer drinker to enjoy this experience. The tour guide touches on the history of Bruges and gives some interesting facts about the city. And a part of the tour also takes you to the rooftop of the brewery, where you get to enjoy some spectacular views of the city. However, if you are a keen beer drinker, I would definitely recommend doing the XL tour. This involves a trip to the sample room where you get to enjoy three glasses of beer brewed in that very building. However, you are limited to two times for the English speaking tour. So I would definitely recommend pre-booking in advance to avoid any disappointment. Number three, a trip to the Historium. The Historium building can be located on the main market square and you get to dive deep into the rich history of Bruges. 
I would definitely recommend doing the Time Traveler Tour. That's what I took. There are three parts to it. The first part is a virtual reality experience where you sit in a booth with a VR headset on and you get the experience what it's like flying through the sky, getting a bird's eye view of medieval Bruges. The second part takes you on a story of a young boy growing up in medieval Bruges and you follow a path which takes you into various rooms and in each room there's a mix of video footage, puppets and props which tell the story. You get to feel what it was like growing up in medieval Bruges. And the final part is your standard kind of museum with artifacts and exhibitions. But I would definitely recommend doing this, the Time Traveller Tour. Number four, climb the Belfry Tower. The Belfry Tower is the most important of Bruges' towers and you get to gain access to the courtyard for free, but to climb the tower costs about 12 euro for an adult ticket. And standing at 83 meters high, you do need to be physically able to climb it. And the staircase does get quite narrow the higher you go up. So just bear that in mind. I'm not great with heights, so I saw this as a bit of a challenge. However, those of you who do take on the challenge, there are various stops along the way, including the old treasury chamber, the clock mechanism, and I'll probably butcher this pronunciation, but the Corilla Nurse chamber which is basically where the person sits and plays the organ-like instrument which makes the chime sound. And after 366 tiring steps, you're rewarded with some breathtaking, unforgettable panoramic views of the city. This is a must do. And finally, number five, take a boat tour. Bruges is known as the Venice of the North for its many canals, so this is a must do. There are various operators positioned along the canals and a ticket costs 10 euro. You really do get to enjoy Bruges from its best angles as you float past medieval palaces, warehouses, duck under bridges and catch a glimpse of the Belfry Tower. So there you go guys, there are my five things you must do when in Bruges. So if you only have a day, make sure to get them done. But if you do have a bit more time, here are some other notable mentions. The Basilica of the Holy Blood Chapel. Inside they have a vial which is believed to contain droplets of Jesus Christ's blood and they do take it out from time to time for visitors to get photographs of but the building itself is stunning so perfect for a photograph opportunity. Another is the Mini Water Lake or Lover's Lake I believe they call it. You can spend some time just relaxing and chilling by the lake taking a few photos again. Another would be the Chocolate Story and the Freights Museum. Now they are located in two different buildings but I got it as a joint ticket and it goes through the history of the Freights and Chocolate and how they are popular pastime snacks now in Belgium. So those are some other recommendations that if you have a bit more time definitely check them out. So now guys I'm going to give five recommendations of like dishes and places to eat in Bruges as well. Again, in no particular order because they were all delicious. Number one, the Potato Bar. This was a restaurant that came highly recommended and even though they are more renowned for their frites and their toppings, I went for an option on the menu called the Mary of Burgundy. And this was a side of a minced meat sausage with various herbs and spices in it and a mustard seed dressing. And even though it was the side, it definitely stole the show. Number two, Flemish stew. This is a regional dish that you can find in many restaurants throughout Bruges. I tried this in a restaurant on the main market square called La Panier Dior. It's made up of tender meat and a rich gravy which was made from a local craft beer and it's definitely something that would warm you up on a cool evening. Number three, Belgian chocolates. Now let's be honest, who doesn't love chocolate? And the Belgians clearly do, as there are an abundance of chocolate stores throughout Bruges. But we're better to try some than at the Chocolate Story Museum. A museum dedicated to chocolate. So that's what I did. And at the end of the tour, there's a demonstration of how they make Belgian chocolate pralines. And you get to buy some of them in the gift shop. So that's a must also. 
Number four, waffles. Synonymous with Belgium, they might as well be a national symbol. I got mine from a franchise called Fred's, but it was unlike any other franchise where there's basically one on every corner. I think there's only a couple in Belgium, France and in Holland. So it is very much like an independent shop where they do take the time and the care of making them. They make them right there in front of you. So the smell will have you drooling as you wait. And there are various options of toppings. I went for chocolate sauce and strawberries, but you'll definitely be back for a second to try another combination. And finally, number five, French fries. Yeah, you heard me right, French fries. Now you're probably wondering, why would I go all the way to Bruges to try French fries? Well, did you know they're actually a Belgian creation? I'll give you a wee history lesson. It goes back to World War I, when a group of American forces met a group of French-speaking Belgian forces. And the Belgians gave them what was a popular pastime snack, frites. So whenever the Americans went back home and told their friends and family about these French forces and the treats they gave them, they came up with the name French fries. But they're actually Belgian. So there you go guys, there's a history lesson for the day. Anyway, it's all down to the way the Belgians cook them and make them. They use a certain type of oil and a certain type of potato and they double fry them, which gives them that crispiness on the outside and fluffiness on the inside. But it's not just about the fruits themselves, it's about the vast amounts of uh, sauces that they offer also. They mix their ketchups with different flavours. I went for a curry ketchup, which was delicious. And their mayonnaise is unlike anything you would try at home. It's so rich and so creamy. You definitely have to try these. So guys, after all that talking of food, I'm absolutely starving. So I think we'll wrap the video up. But thanks very much for checking the video out. Please make sure to give it a like, share, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Also, if you've been to Bruges before, get in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of it. Also, if you have any recommendations, also drop them in the comments. Again guys, thanks very much for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one.